What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And today we are going to discuss the life and career of one of the best pitchers in the live ball era of baseball as we look at Sandy Koufax. Now, Sanford Braun was born on December 30th, 1935 in Brooklyn, New York. Now, he would, of course, end up going by Sandy. When Sandy was only three years old, his parents would get divorced. A few years later, his mom would remarry, and Sandy took his stepfather's last name of Koufax. When he got to high school, Koufax was seen as a star basketball player. He played well, but by the time he was 17, he was recruited to play baseball as well as basketball. He played for the Coney Island Sports League's Park Views, where he served as a pitcher. Koufax was a left-handed, which made his original position of catcher difficult to maintain throughout, you know, a real career. So this is why he became a pitcher. He would eventually walk on at the University of Cincinnati for basketball and also baseball. He proved to have a stellar fastball as he recorded 51 strikeouts, albeit with 30 walks, across 32 innings as a freshman. Koufax immediately drew attention from the majors, and he tried out for the Brooklyn Dodgers, New York Giants, and Pittsburgh Pirates. He was offered a contract by the Dodgers first, and he would accept said contract. He planned to return to college if his baseball career flamed out. Koufax signed for an average annual value of $6,000. Due to this, he was considered a bonus baby. Now, what is a bonus baby, you may be asking? Basically, due to his salary, the rules at that time forced Koufax to be on a major league roster for at least two years before he was allowed to be in the minors. This was meant to help level the playing field for all teams to sign talent, as of course, if a team like the Yankees and the Dodgers and the Red Sox, they could afford to throw far more money at any player that they saw than a team like, you know, the Phillies, for example, at that point in time, and the Pirates, they might not have had been able to afford the same amount of money. So what this did is it made it so if you paid, you know, that young talent $6,000, he had to be on your roster. You couldn't throw him in the minors for five years before you caught him up. So Koufax would end up making his Major League debut on June 24th, 1955, in a game against the Milwaukee Braves. He struggled that game, but he still showed some potential. Throughout his rookie season, Koufax served mostly as a reliever. He finished the year with a 2-2 record with a 3.02 earned run average, 30 strikeouts, but 28 walks. Now, his two wins were both complete game shutouts that year. He won his first World Series in 1955, although he did not play at all during that series. Koufax saw more of the same in the 1956 season, and he still showed to have a stellar fastball, but his control was suspect at best. He saw his ERA balloon to 4.91, and he also t picked up a couple of losses going 2-4 and four that year. And unfortunately, his strikeout-to-walk ratio was very similar, 30 strikeouts, 29 walks. So Koufax, he was not given many opportunities, and he was usually benched for weeks at a time if he struggled. Now, this may have hurt his confidence, which thus helped lead to the bad season. Now, Koufax, he had a decent bounce back in 1957, which saw him record a 3.88 year earned run average while adding 122 strikeouts and 51 walks. He was also the last Dodger to ever pitch in Brooklyn as the team would relocate to Los Angeles the following year. Now, the next three seasons, the first three in Los Angeles, were tough for Koufax. In 1958, he started off strong, but he would eventually suffer an ankle injury that bothered him throughout the whole season. He ended that year with an 11-11 record, a 4.48 earned run average, 131 strikeouts, but 105 walks. He also would lead the majors that year with 17 wild pitches. 1959 was a little better for Sandy, and on August 31st of that year, he tied an MLB record with 18 strikeouts in a single game. This also set the NL record, as he was tied with Bob Feller, who was in Cleveland in the AL. Now, he ended the year with an 8-6 record, a 4.05 earned run average, 173 strikeouts, and 93 walks. The Dodgers would win a close NL pennant, and they met with the White Sox in the World Series. The Dodgers would win the series, and Koufax did pitch in a pair of games. 
He did well, throwing a combined nine innings, but he went 0-1 as a starter despite only giving up a single run. In early 1960, Koufax asked to be traded due to a lack of playing time. The general manager at the time refused, and Koufax begrudgingly played through the year. He went 8-13 with a 3.9 run earned run average, 197 strikeouts, and 100 walks. After the final game of the season, Koufax was so upset that he actually would throw his spikes and his glove into the trash, and he seriously contemplated retiring so he could walk work in an electronics business that he had invested in. Now, he, he basically he ended up deciding to give baseball one more chance, and he returned to L.A. for the 1961 season. He was in better shape than ever before heading into that season. He proceeded to have the best year of his young career as he ended the year with an 18-13 and record, a 3.52 earned run average, a league-leading 269 strikeouts, which actually set the NL record for most strikeouts in a single season in the live ball era, which is 1920 to present day, but at that point, 1920 to 1961. And he also had 96 walks. Now, before the 1962 season, the Dodgers would move into Dodger Stadium. This was a far more pitcher-friendly stadium, and Koufax definitely benefited from the move. He had an elite season in 1962, which included throwing a no-hitter against the Mets on June 30th. Now, he ended that year with a 14-7 record, as well as a 2.54 earned run average, 216 strikeouts, and 57 walks. These numbers were despite the fact that Koufax had injured his hand early on in the season. Now, this injury had occurred during an at-bat as he was jammed by a pitch. Originally, he was dealing with numbness in his left pointer finger, remember he's a lefty, and his finger would become cold and white. After a couple of months, his whole hand became numb, and he was unable to pitch in some games. A doctor had determined that he had crushed an artery in his palm. Now, that sounds super painful, if you ask me. This injury hurt the Dodgers big time as Koufax would miss a chunk of time, and the team would lose out in a close NL pennant race. 1963 saw Koufax put any doubts to rest. He threw yet another no-hitter, this time against a potent San Francisco Giants lineup on May 11th, and now this was the second no-hitter of his career. Koufax would end the year with an elite 25-5 record, a league-best 1.88 earned run average, a league-high 11 shutouts, a league-high 306 strikeouts, and 58 walks. This elite season culminated with the Dodgers winning the World Series in a sweep over the Yankees. So Koufax continued his dream season with two complete games, a 1.50 earned run average, 23 strikeouts, and only three walks in the World Series. This year saw Koufax win the pitcher's triple crown as he led the league in wins, strikeouts, and earned run average. He also won the NL MVP award, and he was the first ever unanimous Cy Young winner. He was also the World Series MVP. Now, Koufax's 1964 season started off well, but in a late April start, he, quote, felt something let go in his arm, end quote. As a result, he got three quarter zone shots, and he missed three starts. He returned, and he played well. He would throw his third career no-hitter, this time against the Phillies, in June of that year. In August, he jammed his left arm while diving for a, you know, while diving back to second base during a pickoff attempt. While he pitched through it, his body betrayed him. After a couple of starts, Koufax woke up and was unable to straighten his left arm. The Dodgers shut down his season as he was diagnosed with traumatic arthritis. Sandy ended the season with a 19-5 record, a 1.74 earned run average, 223 strikeouts, and 53 walks. The 1965 season saw Koufax begin to play through consistent, constant pain. After a spring training game, Koufax awoke to find his entire arm black and blue from hemorrhaging. He returned to LA to talk to the team doctor who advised Koufax to take it easy. Now Koufax, he ignored that advice and he still pitched often, but he took multiple drugs to cope with the pain while also icing his arm after every start. On September 9th, he would throw his first and only perfect game against the Cubs. Koufax had another elite season and once more won the pitcher's triple crown recording a 26-8 record, a 2.04 earn run average, and an MLB record 382 strikeouts. 
to go with 71 walks. He also led the league in complete games with 27 and innings pitched with 335 and two thirds. Now, he won the Cy Young Award easily. The Dodgers won the NL pennant and they matched up with the N- with the AL winning Minnesota Twins in the World Series. Now, there was a little bit of controversy here as Sandy Koufax declined to pitch game one of that World Series. This was controversial and it made headlines all across the nation, but Koufax had declined to pitch since the game had fallen on the same day as Yom Kippur. Now, this surprised many, but it did delight many Jewish people who were proud of Koufax for standing up for his religious beliefs and putting his religion before sports. So, Sandy, he would pitch in games 2, 5, and 7 of that World Series. While he lost the first one, he rallied and he won games 5 and 7, helping the Dodgers to win yet another World Series. Across that series, he pitched to the tune of a 0.38 earn run average, 29 strikeouts, and 5 walks. He was awarded his second World Series MVP award for his performance. Before the 1966 season began, Koufax and the Dodgers GM struggled to agree to a new contract. So as a result, Koufax, he would miss the start of spring training, and he took a role in acting in a movie. Now the two parties would eventually come to terms on a deal just before the season began. Before Koufax even took the mound, he was encouraged to retire by the, to- by the Dodgers team doctor due to his left arm. Now, Koufax, he kept this suggestion to himself, and he went on to have a yet another dominant season, leading the league in wins with 27, ERA with a 1.73, game started 41, complete games 27, shutouts with 5, innings pitched 323, and strikeouts with 317. This led to him winning his third pitcher's triple crown. Now, this dominant performance helped lead the Dodgers to the World Series, but they were swept by the Orioles there. Still, Koufax pitched well in the series, but it was not enough. Now, somewhat surprisingly, on November 18th, 1966, Koufax surprised a lot of people by announcing that he was retiring from baseball due to his arm at the age of 30. Throughout his career, Koufax compiled very good stats. He had a career record of 165 and 87 while recording a career 2.76 earn run average, 137 complete games, 40 of which were shutouts, 2,396 strikeouts, 817 walks. All of this was across 2,324 and one third innings pitched. He also had a 4 and 3 postseason record to go with a 0.95 earn run average, 61 strikeouts, and 11 walks. He was a seven time All Star, four time World Series champ, two time World Series MVP one-time National League MVP, three-time Cy Young Award winner, three-time NL Pitchers Triple Crown Award winner, three times he led the league, the majors in wins, five times he led the National League in earn run average, four times he led the majors in strikeouts, and he had a then career high of four no-hitters, one of which was, of course, a perfect game. A lot of, a lot of numbers there. I do apologize for that. Now, He also had his number of 32 retired by the Dodgers, and he was a member of both the MLB All-Century and the MLB All-Time teams. In 1972, he was inducted into the Hall of Fame on his first ballot. He became the youngest player ever inducted into the Hall of Fame as he was only 36 years old at the time. After retirement, Koufax has hung around baseball. He has served as an announcer for NBC for six years. Starting in 1979, Koufax worked as a minor league pitching coach for the Dodgers until he resigned in 1990. He also worked with the Dodgers for a few years in the 2000s, but it wasn't anything crazy. Now, this also included serving as a special advisor to the team president. Koufax has been relatively quiet in recent years, and he rarely makes public appearances. Now, the most recent thing I could really find about Koufax was back in May. He did launch a website. I believe it's just like Sandy Koufax. Uh, dot com Sandy Sandy folk yep Sandy com and basically what he does on this site is he sells memorabilia that he autographed and all that so it's kind of cool if you're a Dodgers fan you could definitely you should definitely check it out but yeah so Sandy Koufax though without a doubt is one of the best players one of the best pitchers to ever play the sport of baseball he will always be remembered 
as one of the biggest what ifs in the history of the league. What if his arm had stayed healthy? What if he would have been able to pitch another decade? Still, Koufax, by far one of the biggest names in the league, so he was more than deserving of his own video despite not playing a long time in the league. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, that was a, the whole life of Sandy Koufax. Have a good rest of your day.